Now four. Good morning and welcome to Miracle Farm 1927 Homestead. Neighbors, we are so glad that you're here with us today. We're doing something exciting, well to us anyway. We are getting these old blocks that we've had stored up uh, to build the pit that our uh, sorghum pan is going to go on. So the men's been out here working really hard and uh, getting enough block for it. And we are so thankful that you're here with us to share in the building of this thing. They are wet and it makes them more heavy. So our first pan that it's got to sit on is this one. And it's got to sit on the inside of these blocks. We're making it just like we did in the previous video. So we'll leave a link to that on this. So they're working on getting the uh, first round level. And then we'll go up from there. If we were building this permanent, we would put it on a foundation, but this is just temporary. We're going to see how sorghum goes this year before we decide whether we want to do it more often. So now we've got the eight in the two rows of eight inch block and now he's putting the six inch block and the six inch is so this pan this will be the pan to cool it off at the end and will hold water so it doesn't touch the molasses or anything so it doesn't matter if it's rusty it's just a cooling mechanism so now they're putting the uh, six inch block and that's what the uh, vat will sit on. We got this block, and this type of block has got a little slit in it, and that's where you can split it in half. This block doesn't have one, and we need one more to go on the end. We got the six inch block all laid, and there's a place on the back. This won't be in it, the big pan won't be in it while we're cooking but this block has been left out for the chimney. Here on the 
top. Ready. Ready. Squirt right here at this line. Top and bottom. There it is. Then you gotta trim this up a little bit. Boy, that's nice. It's all that measuring. So we got it about halfway cleaned out. Come to find out the tub is a little bit unlevel. We'll be scrubbing this. And then we'll be putting water in it to boil to sanitize it before we put any molasses juice in it. And in the kitchen, we've got pumpkin seeds drying. We got black beans that we're going to have some for supper and the rest we're going to can. They're soaking. And we got figs all rinsed off. And they are fixing to go in the dryer. Just busy time. If you're not familiar with this bush, it is a roselle, and uh, its other name is hibiscus, and some good friends of ours from Milk and Honey Farm gave us our first seeds, and since then we've been growing it, and what this plant does is every year it'll grow this big, humongous bush, in one season. And what we're after on this bush are the little seed pods. There's a seed inside of there. These are just about ready. Let me pull one off. So this is what we're after. Now inside is a big old green seed. Let me see if I can do it with one hand. See? Well, we don't want that. All we want are the leaves around it. So I'll cut around the bottom and slide the little seed pod out. And we'll put this in our dryer, our food dryer. And this makes the most wonderful cranberry tasting tea. And it's beautiful for the holidays because it's so red. I mean, it's just a beautiful dark red. And this is one of my favorite, favorite teas. And this bush is going, will make, you really don't need that many bushes. I got them around the herb garden. There's one over there and over there. But to make tea for a year, you really don't need that many bushes because one bush is just going to produce and produce and produce. So these are ready to pick and we're going to start picking and drying these today. But isn't it beautiful? It just makes a beautiful bush, if nothing else. This is our beautiful roselle that we're fixing to dry. 
So I thought I'd show you how to um, take the little leaves off and take the seed pod out. Real easy, but a beautiful tea. So all we do is get a nice sharp knife and go around. This is the bottom. And just cut around. And then squeeze the top and the seed shoots right out. They are even beautiful on the drying rack. Got a lot more to go though. So we got them all filled up. Gonna put the lid on. Cut it on. Now I've been, uh, yesterday I dried some okra. It's not completely dry yet, but I wanted to get this hibiscus in. So uh, I want to use these as craft projects for Christmas and Christmas gifts and maybe paint them. So if anybody's got any ideas, now we're not real big on Santa Claus, but something else for Christmas to celebrate the birth of Christ, we want to paint these up. And if you've got any ideas on uh, what we could do, leave it in the comments down below. Thanks a lot. Well, we got our hibiscus all dry. We got seeds that are drying here on the table. And got our jar ready for the hibiscus to go in. And this is just a busy time of year for the dryer and food preservation. Something's going on just all the time right now.